Um, OK, so let me continue. So if I'm not mistaken, it's lecture number seven. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, oops. Um, so it's type system seven. And there are two, um, two somewhat disjoint topics uh, which I planned for today. So one of them is, I want to say a few words, a few more uh, general words about the construction which takes a pair consisting of a category and the universe in the category and assigns to it uh, a C system and assigns to it a C system. Now, what I want to mention is the following is the following construction. So suppose I have a uh, suppose I start with a C system, C C. So what I want to do is I want to prove that any C system is canonically isomorphic to a C system which arises from a universe in a category. So this is actually a, a, any C system can be produced in this way, and the construction is very simple. So I start with a C system C C. I consider the category of pre sheaves on C C, which which just the category of contravariant functors from from C C as a category to sets, from, from the underlying category of C C to sets. Uh, now let me construct canonical universe in here. Uh, and it looks as follows. I think I remember even. So this P canonical, I need to have a morphism, right? In pre -shift. So I start by taking U to be the functor which takes an object X of CC and sends it to the set uh, of all objects, uh, all y, such that the father of y equals x. Now, precisely because, so, and then the functoriality uh, is given by the pullback. Precisely because the pullback is uh, associative on the nose, this is actually a functor to sets. So to say that it's a functor to sets is equivalent to say that the, uh, the pullback construction on the level of CC is, uh, is strictly, mm, strictly associative, so to speak. And then U tilde is the functor which takes X and sends it to the set of all, um, so I, I could, of all sections, yeah, uh, as from X to, to Y, where, um, so sections little s, where the father of the target of S D of S is X in our annotation. And there is a theorem which says that, well, as mathematicians say it, there is, but in fact the theorem is a construction of, uh, there is an isomorphism from CC uh, to this C system, which is constructed from pre shifts on CC uh, with respect to this universe. Uh, I will refer to, let me see which page it is. It's pa page 28 
proof. <coughs> it's page 28 of the notes. Um, and it, it's rather straightforward, in fact. Now, in connection with this, uh, there is another hypothetical statement, which is, as far as I remember, turns out not to be straightforward, which is kind of surprising. So um, let us give a definition. Definition, uh, let CC be a C system. It's a definition from the notes. So uh, a closed model, maybe you'll complain at, at the terminology, but a closed model of CC uh, is a C system homomorphism from CC uh, to, um, to the contextual category uh, constructed from um, from a universe in, in a usual category uh, of the form. <coughs> now, in my notes, and I haven't had time to think about it much, so I, I'm uh, leaving it as, an, as a question instead of as a statement. So in my notes, there is an unproved sta statement. So it, instead of a statement, it becomes a question. So let us, uh, let's say, Let's say that, um, let me have a look at it for a moment to, make, to be precise. I don't know. Uh, it, it's purely, for some reason, I, clo I, I called it this way. Um, uh -huh. So there was the following statement, which looks very reasonable, but I think I couldn't prove it. Uh, so let CC be a C, uh, C system. C a category. And F from the underlying category of CC to this C um, a functor. Not a homomorphism of any C system, just a function. Then there exists, there is uh, a functor mm, let's call it phi from pre shifts on C C to pre shifts on C such that the following square commutes up to a functor isomorphism. So I start with CC. Mm. Let me be careful here. There is, I think, a mistake in the formulation. Uh, just a second, excuse me. Um, oh, no, it, it's more complicated than that. Uh, then there is.
a universe uh, p uh, from u tilde to u in pre-shifts on round t uh, and the C system homomorphism from CC to the C system associated with pre-shifts on round C and this universe Oh, okay, uh, a functor which commutes with fiber products. In particular, it takes fi final objects to final objects. Uh, then there is a C-system homomorphism, a, a universe and the C-system homomorphism such that the square CC going to pre shifts on round C relative to this universe. And here it goes to C and C goes by Yoneda to pre shifts on C. And this is the forgetting uh, map. So such that this commutes. So this essentially says that uh, any functor which preserves mm, fiber products can be lifted to a closed model in the sense of this definition. And I, I kind of started to prove it, and you can see in the notes the beginnings of the proof, but then it didn't, it did work out. So, uh, so it is a conjecture. Yeah, I tried to, to do something like extension along along F, but s some things kind of didn't want to converge because there is also an issue of how one chooses a universe. Let me say this, that the Kant extension of that right, and, and pro probably that's precisely how, how the, the proof starts, which, which didn't want to go through. <laughs> but maybe I simply, uh, I, I don't know what, the, what is the complexity of this conjecture. I don't know whether it's true or not, actually. Maybe one can invent a counterexample, but, um, but here it is, so anyway. It is in a sense an extension of this theorem, because this theorem says that any C system can be obtained from a universe. So the next step is to, to say that any, well, yeah, that any, any kind of category theoretic model can be lifted to a C-system model. So that's the end of uh, the first topic. And um, now we go to the second one. And the second topic is uh, dependent, uh, dependent products and how dependent products look in various formalizations uh, of, um, I don't know, of C systems, so to speak. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I'll draw a, draw a scheme of how I want to, to explain it, and then uh, it will be clear. So I, so I have several contexts in which fiber products can be discussed, and I want to um, outline how they are connected, formally connected to each other. So the first context is syntactic. Uh, the second one, so there will be four of them, so uh, 
The second one is the context of C systems. The third one are B systems. And the fourth one are universes in category. So let's start with the syntactic one. And that's what all of us are, are familiar with. So these are usual in, in terms rules for introduction elimination rules for dependent products. So what, what one writes is something like gamma uh, x t1 y t2 is a well-formed context implies that um, gamma say y product of x in t1 comma t2 is a well-formed context that's then if I have gamma x t1 O in T2, then I can write gamma uh, lambda x in C1, comma O uh, is an object of the product of x in T1, comma T2. Then there is, well, I ah, I have more space. So then there is evaluation, so gamma O, uh, let me think a second. It's gamma X T1 Y T, uh, gamma F P X T1 comma T2, uh, gamma O in T1, gamma evaluation of F on O uh, in T2 with O replacing X. Then we have, let me actually write it. Then we have beta reduction, which is gamma, hmm, Let, let me start with the conclusion. So I want to say that gamma lambda evaluation of lambda x in T1 of O on O prime equals O with O prime replacing x. Um, and that equality happens in uh, T2 with O prime replacing X. So now let's have a look what we need in the assumptions. So we still need gamma mm, X T1 Y T2. Or, or rather we, we need this uh, O T2. And we need gamma O prime T1. I think that, that's, that's the correct set of, of assumptions. So this is beta reduction. And finally, there is eta reduction. The assumption for eta reduction is that we have a function in the product X T1 comma T2. And then... Um, lambda x in T1 of evaluation of f on x equals f in this product type. This takes care of, of the fact that f doesn't contain, um, that f doesn't contain x, things like that. So that, that's the kind of context-dependent formulation of ETA, which takes care of the usual uh, con conditions. 
So this is a syntactic system, which one usually calls uh, dependent products in the type theory. So this is this collection of inference rules is what one calls the pie structure in, in the syntactic uh, world, so to speak. Uh, which one do you call elimination rule? I, I always, because I don't understand the, the etymology of, of this term. I, I never remember which one is called evaluation, and which, uh, which one is called elimination, which one introduction. <coughs> so, mm -hmm. yes, and what is more general one? Oh, it's kind of Iker rule. Well, that's very interesting. I, I haven't thought about it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll need to take a look. Or, or maybe I'll just ask you to, um, to, to say it in an email so that I can, um, can think about it. But this is kind of a more standard way of for formulating it. I don't know whether, to what extent this is equivalent. Okay. Some kind of additional either rule? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. I didn't know about it. Thank you. So, uh, and I don't know how it would propagate to, to the other context. And It definitely kind of propagates very nicely uh, in, in this into this other context, and I, it's a little hard to imagine for me how it could generalize in the other in the other uh, context. Uh, but let's check it, and, and it will be a, so. I'll, I'll I'll put a check mark uh, that I need to uh, to think about it and, and mention it uh, in the next lecture. So now let's go to C systems. And here we need, first we need a definition uh, so let C be a one category. Uh, by the way, maybe this is a good terminology. Maybe, Michael, what do you think if, if, we, if we call this saturated things one categories? Just, just an idea. Univalent, yeah. Well, actually, here it doesn't matter whether it's okay. Let, let, let's not think about it. So, uh, so let, let's see, be a category, one category, and um, let f x um, g zy and fyx uh, be two morphisms. A pair uh, of the form, and we assume uh, be a category and um, just uh, let me, so a pair w, wx, Z is called universal if if for any u over x the mapping morphisms um, 
over x from u to w to morphisms over y from u times over x y z is a bijection. So on, on the picture, it means that I have uh, z, y, x, and this uh, universal universal pair is is that which uh, in algebraic geometry would probably be denoted uh, p over sharp of z. So this is p. Then I think that's how it it would be denoted, and it's an object here. Uh, so I, I have a pullback functor from objects over x to objects over y. And this thing is the left adjoint. So there is direct image. No, no, excuse me. This, this, should, be, this should be star. This is star, yeah. This is, this is the, the direct image of the representable pre-shift, of the pre-shift representable by z. Right. The left adjoint would be z itself considered over x instead of over y. But if I want kind of to be a little bit more precise, and do things on the nose as opposed to up to an isomorphism, one has to formulate that it's a morphism together with uh, a certain map which, uh, which can be defined as a universal um, object. Now, it's not hard to see that this thing, if it exists, then it's uh, unique up to a canonical isomorphism. Now, definition, a pi structure uh, on a C system CC is a collection of data of the following form. For each y in uh, let me write it this way, object CC of level greater or equal to 2, um, or I think we denote it as, as BN of CC. So it's it in BN of CC where N is greater or equal to 2, An object phi of y in b n minus one c c such that the father of phi of y is the second father of y. Uh, the second uh, component of the structure for every y in B n C C and greater or equal to two, uh, a morphism called eval, which goes from pi father of y upper star of pi of y into y, and it should be a morphism over f father of y. Mm. Such that, so this is the data, and the conditions are uh, as the following to the first uh, for every z to the second father of y, the f upper star of pi of y equals pi of f upper star of y. And the second condition is that the pair, again for every y, uh, the pair pi of y comma eval is universal, is a universal pair in the sense of that definition, for 
are the sequence of maps from y to pi of y uh, to father of y to the second father of y. F is the na name of the map, thank you. So this is called a pi structure on, on a C system. Actually, I should have done something slightly different. I should have put B systems here and C systems on the other side. Because B systems is what directly connected to the syntactic level. Then from B systems, one goes to C systems, and C systems are directly connected to categorical level. So um, this, this needs to be exchanged for um, better presentation. Um, so before I make any statements about pi structures on C systems, let me uh, formulate what is a pi structure on a B system. So a pi structure on a B system, Bn, Bn tilde, plus all, all, all the structures which should be there. Um, I don't think it's. Oh. Um, uh, is a collection of data of the form. So the data itself is as follows. There is a function for every n. There is a function phi from bn plus 2 into bn plus 1 for every n greater or equal to 0. Uh, there is a function lambda from b tilde n plus 2 into b tilde n plus 1 for all n greater or equal to 0. And there is a function called ev from b tilde n plus 1 uh, depend, uh, fiber product over partial on this side and over further on that side b n plus 2. Uh, and there is another fiber product with pi on this side, and partial on that side, b tilde n plus 1. And it goes to b tilde n plus 1. And again, n greater or equal to 0. So it's this set of data uh, plus axioms. And this can be seen on pages 44, 45 of the notes. And there's a bunch of axioms. Uh, of which symbol? This D. Uh, this D is so. So elements of B tilde are, are sections x to uh, sections of the can of the display map. So this is th these are what elements of uh, of B, B tilde are. And the partial is just the map which assigns to such a section its target. Now there is a straightforward theorem which connects this to this. And the theorem uh, <coughs> sounds as follows. Uh, mm. Suppose I have a system of expressions. And suppose I have a type system over the system of, system of expressions in, in the sense of a formal definition which was given uh, a few lectures before. Then a structure of this form on the type system, or structures of this form on the type system, are in the natural bijection with structures of this form on the associated uh, B system. So these are, these are two different ways of saying the same thing uh, about type systems 
in the sense in the sense of the formal definition which was given before. Mm. To be slightly uh, slightly more precise, these are exactly the same in the context of free type systems. Well, this cannot be free because it already has this. Uh, uh, to be more precise, one has to extend these rules uh, with the rules which say that uh, the definitional equality propagates through these constructions. And then it will be exactly precise. So one has to say that if something is definitionally equal, then the product of this something is definitionally equal. And so on. Now, uh, what's important here is that this is this is a typical quasi-algebraic structure. I mean, the B system itself is a typical quasi-algebraic system. Uh, and this is a typical additional structure uh, of the quasi-algebraic sort, so to speak. Because these are operations. And then one has another operation, which is a partial operation, where the domain of definition is determined by equations on the previously introduced operations. So it's, it's a kind of a, it's a good um, example of how quasi-algebraic structures uh, in, in real life may look like. And there's a whole bunch of axioms which are also um, of the quasi-algebraic nature. So the second theorem says that a B structure, so, so we know that C, C systems and B systems are in an equivalence. So the second theorem says that uh, giving a pi structure on a B system is equivalent to, given, to giving a pi structure in this sense on the associated C system. So these are, again, two representations of essentially the same thing. And I don't have it as a formal theorem, but uh, hopefully at, at some point in, in the formalization process, we'll have such a theorem also. So now the fourth, um, the fourth way to look at um, At pi structures um, is as follows. Let me find the pages here. Uh, so here is again definition. Will be much shorter than the other ones. Um, I, I need to, f to fix. Uh, to say two words about general terminology. So, uh, so one thing which I want to recall is that uh, a locally Cartesianly closed category is a category mm, which has fiber products and uh, all of the um, sli all of its slice categories, I think it's called, all of its slice categories. So the categories of objects over an object uh, have internal forms. Now, there is again uh, a pre theorem here which says that if one has uh, a true or saturated or whatever we, we call it, uh, theorem which only makes sense in, in the uh, univalent uh, formalization, if we have a univalent category, um, let me say saturated for now. If we have a saturated, <laughs> if we have a saturated category, uh, then the type of all possible choices of, uh, of such internal homes, which is very easy to define in Koch, for example, uh, this type always has H level one. So it's always an H prop. Um, and so an LCC category is that category, is such a category for which uh, this type is inhibited. Uh, and because it's an H prop, 
there is no difference between uh, choosing uh, internal homes and saying that there exist internal homes. And, and this can be a formula. And the, the statement about the type of all possible choices being an, in H prop is, is a formal mathematical formulation of, of an intuitive uh, statement that making a choice of, of such internal homes is the same as saying that they exist. So uh, in, in practice, I will be uh, speaking in, in about a category where choice of internal homes has been made. So um, let's see B and LCC locally partitioning closed category. Uh, Uh, a pi structure on a universe. Um, okay, let me do it this way. On a, on a universe P U tilde U uh, is a pair of a pair of morphisms. So the first morphism goes from you take an internal home over U from U uh, to U times U. Now this U is considered over itself as, as it should. I will um, now here are, there are two U's. So there are two different ways in which to, uh, to consider it as an object over U. And I will underlie the one U which, uh, to which the projection is made. Th then just to, to not to get uh, mixed in it. Uh, so the, fir the first morphism which we need is called capital P. And it goes from this internal home to U. The second morphism which we need to have is from u tilde u times u tilde into u tilde and it's called capital P tilde so it's a pair of morphisms uh, such that P and P tilde such that the square which is formed by this uh, two morphisms and two other morphisms which I'll de describe in a moment now here I have a morphism which is just um, oh excuse me I made a little mistake here here should be U tilde and here I have a morphism, which a morphism which corresponds to the projection from this u tilde to this u. So you mean you have only tilde and then you follow the No, I don't, because it's, uh, this, is, uh, this is the u which allows me to consider this product as an object over u. But you put a tilde in the choice of capital P on the top board, and there's no tilde. In oh. The oh, this one, this one I do need. Thank you. Uh, such that the square is uh, is a pullback square. U underbar is uh, is that component to which I project in order to consider this product uh, as an object over over U. I, I don't really need it. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And I technically speaking need an underbar maybe here, but. So I, I have this, these two arrows uh, are given by, by the existing structures and a pi structure on a universe uh, is two morphisms such as this square is a pullback square. There are no additional axioms. 
Uh, now the theorem here, uh, in fact, I, I only thought about one direction uh, theorem and how to formulate a bidirectional theorem uh, for uh, in involving this description I haven't thought about. So, so I'll give a one directional theorem. Uh, if one has a pi structure on a universe in the sense of this definition, then it defines uh, a pi structure in the sense of one of these two, well, in the sense of this definition on the C system which is associated with this universe. So universe defines the C system. Uh, and then if one has such a structure on the universe, then one gets this structure on the C system. So these are kind of four phases of the dependent product. Now the way to, to apply it is, I, the ideal way to apply it uh, would, would be something like that. Uh, one would start with a type system and one would somehow prove that um, a type system consists of a, one would, um, one would write uh, a description of a type system not, not through the logical framework, even though it might be related, but um, as a collection of um, operations, additional operations on, uh, as a collection of operations, uh, as a collection of structures on a B system. So one formally considers various uh, type system as a collection of structures on the B system. And then one will say that a type system this syntactic gadget which we work with is just uh, an explicit description of the free B system with these additional structures. So this is by the way the uh, introduction rule, the inference rule. So that's the inference rule which is formally algebraically written. So that's exactly the same thing for evaluation. Which is written as, as a simple algebraic Thing. And all of the other inference rules can be written in the same terminology. It, uh, actually, I didn't remember about it until uh, I started to give this lecture. And I mean, didn't remember that, that it actually can be done very uh, probably, um, it can pro possibly it can be practically done. We need to think about it. Because this is, this is somewhat more straightforward than uh, than going through through that formally. So, so a description would be that the type system, a T theory, a T theory uh, consists of a, of a bunch of um, quasi-algebraic structures on on B systems. Uh, associated type system is a free. Uh, it is a syntactic realization of the corresponding free algebra, uh, free model. And if it is so, then in order, for example, we can start with, uh, let's say, type system, which, is, which has one object or, or like several generating objects and dependent product. Then we have every, everything here. We don't need to invent much. So we can say that such a type system, which just have some generators and the dependent product, uh, is nothing but a syntactic model for a free uh, B system with that many generators in this additional structure. In it. So because of that, to construct a model of such a type system is exactly the same as to construct a B system with such a structure on it. Because then you'll get a canonical homomorphism from the corresponding free object. So in particular, to construct a closed model of such a gadget, it's sufficient to, to choose a category and a universe with this additional structure. And that's kind of my, that's how I envision this, this theory should look like if, if we kind of, sh should be the, the, the kind of the right way of, of 
of formalizing this theory, the theory of which connects the syntax and semantics of, um, of type theories. Uh, well, here, well, here there are no definitional equalities anymore, right? I mean, they're just equalities. This, these are sets and equalities. Yeah, equality uh, uh, no, no, no. It's it's a free model of a given algebraic theory, L like a free yeah. group, for example. The, the group uh, axioms of group have equalities in them, but one still speaks about a free group. And on this side, one. Uh, one doesn't consider the expressions or rather judgments or in context themselves to, to, to produce a B structure, but their equivalence classes with respect to mm, definitional equality. Actually, I think I'm done for today. Um, that's, uh, thank you very much and please ask any questions. Thank you. Well, there is substitution here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then if I add the specificity, it's only corresponding between uh, the syntax and the vector. This is only simpler. Maybe simpler. Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand. I, I, I don't know what you mean by, uh, by other formulation of um, p pieces. If you kind of can em email me and. Yeah. No, it's the opposite direction. Then it will have pi system groups in every No, no, no. This this statement is would be the other direction, which yeah, I have not checked. Okay. So that that no, that but is correct. That it might be correct. No, what I'm saying is is the opposite. Uh, what, what I checked is is the uh, reverse direction. Okay. If I start with the one category, yeah. with uh, with the um, with the universe in it, yeah. for which one has such a square. Then the associated C system has pi, has pi structure in this sense. But then the other direction is the one that I just said. Yeah, the other may seems, seems very plausible, but I haven't checked it. Yes? Uh -huh. And then, you know, you have the various operations on those sets, which, you know, like in the case of the lambda for example, times one variable, you know, and then you go from uh, Cn plus one to Cn, for example. Uh, and then you can also convert to type theory, uh, and I believe type theory in that sort of form is like, you know, that you kind of untype next, uh, but it's not untyped in the sense that you interpret into one category of terms, one set of terms, but the type of it is indexed by the number of variables that you use to look at the question. Like the what is, uh, how do you spell the, I, I, it doesn't seem to be exactly the same because here we definitely work with, with the uh, fully typed situation. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a connection, I would say, that you kind of first, the structure that just set up that class exists in the full B type S mm -hmm. of things which will interpret expressions with at most n free variables. 
other than Pierre, has been the first to try construction on the, the firm to do the consultancy. And then afterwards, you know, one can kind of define various predicates on those, on those steps, which is, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of time, the, you know, the, the set of elements for the second time. So like, like he is, is a well-formed type and stuff like this? Yeah. That seems to it 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 it, it, it very suggestive. Uh, it's it's not this. It's not identical to this, most likely. Right. But it's uh, it, it's kind of halfway. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's it's actually. What is the name of the? Could you email me with the name of yeah, and, and the reference because I'll, I'll have a look and maybe there. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 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 since you haven't been here at, at the beginning, th there are uh, uh, there are exactly the contextual categories. Th they're not even similar. Th th there are exactly the contextual categories. It's just because of the terminology, because we we didn't I didn't want to propagate the word category too much. Uh, I, I I started to call them C systems. Actually, in the um, updated version of of the paper, which I think is now posted to my website. I, I say that this is a contextual category, just give them another name. And then, you know, there is the, the sort of old paper by Robert Key that you know just about the interpretation of the refractory and local confusion state categories, which was then a coherent problem in that paper, which was most well addressed by uh, Martin Hawke, I think, by him. Yes, that approach to models I, 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 I've been familiar with yeah. before I came up with this idea. And here the idea of having the universe uh, is, is precisely a way to, uh, to get rid of all these coherence problems in, in kind of one, yeah. in one move. Yeah. And, and it's kind of, um, yeah, and so then it's, it's this one idea of going to actual Well, it, it hasn't been developed in my framework. It had been developed before these ideas became, came to light, so to speak. Uh, but it just turns out to be, to fit well with them later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you again. What will you do next week? Huh? What will you do next week? I don't quite know yet. Okay. Um, well, there are, <coughs> one thing would be to explain in this language, uh, the notion of predicative and impredicative universe. So impredic what it means, what we call a predicative or impredicative universe as, as a part of type system, how does it, what it corresponds to on this, uh, in this language. Um, also depend on sums. I mean, all of the standard things have similar Im expressions and uh, that's probably what I will uh, mostly talk about. So dependent sums, universes, and identity types. That's, that's what I have in, in the form of such, such diagrams.